Welcome back, it's Jason Walter here, and here's your latest housing market update. The National Association of Realtors just released a new report this morning, which is the 24th of August, and they stated that pending home sales uh, decreased by 1% in July. But that's not the full story because pending home sales, which again is when a contract is signed between a home buyer and a home seller, have dipped to the lowest levels since April 2020, and before that, the lowest levels in over a decade. And with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the video here. I also have some news regarding um, mortgage applications because those have been decreasing as well uh, for home purchases. So I hope you guys get a lot of value in today's video. And of course, if you do, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Also consider subscribing as well. I post frequent housing market updates so you guys can be more informed. Hope you guys enjoy uh, these videos. I certainly enjoy making them, especially after uh, coming off a two week vacation here. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the video here. This is from the National Association of Realtors, uh, just released today at the time of this video. Again, pending home sales uh, dipped 1% in July, but that's not the big story though. That's not the big uh, news headline we should be focusing on. And of course, I'm gonna give you guys some additional insights regarding this report here, uh, something you will not read in this report uh, from the National Association of Realtors. Uh, in any case, pending home sales declined for the second consecutive month in July and for the eighth time in the last nine months. So um, pending home sales, which again are signed contracts, um, have decreased in eight out of the last nine months. Also three out of the four major regions in the US uh, registered month over month decreases in pending home sales uh, in the US here. And also year over year, all four major regions saw double digit uh, percentage decreases. So the National Association of Realtors has what's called the pending home sale index or their PHSI. Uh, this of course is based on contract signings, which is a forward looking indicator of our housing market here. And their index dropped by 1% from June, but decreased 19.9% uh, from one year ago. And here's a table I pulled from their website here. Again, uh, in July, uh, pending home sales decreasing by 1%, but decreasing by almost 20% uh, from one year ago. And their index in July was 89.8. I'll see the lowest levels we've seen in the last 12 months based on this uh, chart here, and also over the past uh, few years as well, uh, in 2019 through 2021. But of course, I did some digging for you guys and found out that 89.8, if you actually exclude April 2020, which is obviously the onset of this pandemic, this is the lowest levels since September 2011. In other words, if we exclude April 2020, contracts signed are at the lowest levels in over a decade. What's also pretty astonishing is that this decrease in pending home sales was really felt across all major regions in the US. So only the West saw an increase of pending home sales uh, by 2.2%. All other major regions recorded a decrease in contract signed. However though, compared to one year ago, every single major region here recorded a double digit decrease uh, in their index here. Uh, the biggest was seen in the West, a decrease by 30.1% and also in the South, decreasing by 20%. And according to the National Association of Realtors Chief Economist, Lawrence Hume, he had this to say, in terms of the current housing cycle, we may be at or close to the bottom in contract signings. I have some mixed uh, feelings regarding this because he's saying here that we may be very close to uh, the bottom of contract signings across the United States here. But have a look at this. Uh, this is last month report from the National Association of Realtors for June. Of course, this new report is for July, of course, right? But one month ago, uh, they reported on July 27th that contracts signed actually fell 8.6% uh, from May. So on a month over month basis, contracts fell by 8.6%, whereas in this most recent report, uh, contracts signed dipped by 1%. Um, but compared to one year ago, in their previous report for uh, July, or I should say for June, uh, contracts signed decreased by 20% uh, from one year ago. In July, it decreased by 19.9%. So on a year-over-year -year basis, contracts signed both in June and July uh, decreased by about 20%. We did see a decrease by 1% on a month-over-month -month basis in July uh, compared to an 8.6% decrease in June. And because contracts signed decreased by about 20% on a year-over-year -year basis both in July and also in June, I wouldn't really say that we may be at or close to the bottom of this uh, market here in regards to contract signings. Uh, but let's have a look at uh, Redfin's website here to see what they're showing us right now. Uh, again, this is for Redfin. 
across all Redfin met metros. I believe this is around 400 plus uh, metros in the US right now. Uh, for July, or for the most part of July, uh, for July 4th through uh, July 31st, pending home sales decreased by 17.5%. As you can see here, um, over the past a few weeks here, uh, pending home sales have basically been more or less flat. So basically flat ever since uh, the four weeks ending July 10th of this year. And according to the latest trends we have from Redfin here, uh, contract signs have basically been more or less flat for the past month. And compared to one year ago, contracts signed are down about 17% compared to one year ago, but again, more or less flat over the past month here. And I'll definitely keep you posted regarding this because if we start seeing this a similar trend where pending home sales basically are remaining very flat, it could indicate that home buying demand is not going down as much as we once thought. But of course, if this trend actually decreases again, then that would indicate again that our housing market's slowing down further. And again, I'll definitely keep you posted regarding this. In any case, let's go back to this original report here because they talk about housing affordability. So in June, housing affordability uh, plummeted to its lowest levels since 1989, according to the National Association of Realtors. Uh, the monthly mortgage payment on a typical um, home in the United States right now uh, jumped to $1,944 per month, an increase of 54% or $679 more per month compared to one year ago. And Lawrence Yoon went on to say the following here, home prices are still rising by double digit percentages year over year. I actually don't really like this quote so much because he's really focusing on year over year changes and not month over month changes. Uh, so he is right that um, home prices have increased by double digits compared to one year ago. As I reported to you guys, I believe it was yesterday. So home prices have increased by, I believe it was 10.8% uh, from July, 2021 to July, 2022. But what he fails to mention here is that home prices actually decreased by 2.4% compared to the previous month. But he adds here that annual price appreciation should moderate to the typical rate of 5% by the end of the year and into 2023. And he says with mortgage rates expected to stabilize near 6% alongside steady job creation, home sales should start to rise by early next year. Of course, we'll have to see. But in regards to mortgage rates, here's the latest news we have for you guys. Uh, so the 10-year U.S. Treasury note is at 3.10%. It has increased by 0.05 percentage points um, as of today. But compare this to uh, the year to date, or the end of the start of this year, I should say, uh, the yield was at 1.7%. Now it's at 3.1%. And this is why we're seeing mortgage rates increase, of course, right? So according to investopedia.com as of today, which again is the 24th of August, for people with exceptional credit, the average 30-year fix is at 6.08%. This is actually a little bit higher compared to the Mortgage News Daily. As of today, uh, they're reporting that rates are at 5.84%. Uh, uh, compared that to one year ago, rates are at 2.93% or a 2.91 percentage point increase compared to one year ago. And by the way, mortgage rates have not been this high since early July of this year. Okay, changing gears slightly, let's talk about mortgage applications because the Mortgage Bankers Association, or the MBA, just released the latest numbers as of um, August 24th, the time of this video. So mortgage applications decreased by 1.2% from one week ago, and this is for the week ending August 19th of this year. Of course, as you guys all know, mortgage applications include refis plus home purchases, right? So the refi index decreased by 3% compared to the previous week, but was down 83% compared to the same time period one year ago. In other words, rates have increased greatly and therefore refinances, of course, have fallen off the cliff. In contrast though, their purchase index, which of course is an index based on uh, the total number of people submitting loan applications for home purchases, their purchase index uh, decreased by 2% compared to the previous week, but was down 21% uh, compared to the same week one year ago. And of course, I did some digging for you guys, and I found out that the purchase index, if you actually exclude April 2020, this is the lowest levels since November of 2016. In other words, the amount of people submitting loan applications for home purchases are at the lowest levels in almost six years. 
You actually can see that when looking at this chart right here on the Mortgage News Daily's website here. So their current index is at 202.8. Again, that's their purchase index. If you actually exclude April 2020, of course, their index was very low at that time because we had state home orders across the nation here. So if we exclude April 2020, the current levels right now at 202.8 are the lowest levels we've seen since November of 2016. And according to Joel Kahn, who's one of the MBA's associate vice presidents, uh, he stated that um, total mortgage applications are basically at a 22-year low uh, due to a big fallout of refinances, but also due to home purchase activity as well. And he goes on to say that the average purchase loan size has continued to trend lower as purchase activity at the high end of the market is weakening. What he's saying here is that fewer people are applying for loans at the upper end of this market here. And that's one reason why their purchase size has been decreasing. Additionally, the spread between fixed rate loans and adjustable rate mortgage loans narrow to 84 basis points from over 100 basis points from the prior week. And this is why the arm share of activity decreased to 6.5% of total applications. And by the way, the year-to-date high was around 12%. And also at the start of this year, it was around 3%. And because that spread between a fixed rate loan and an adjustable rate mortgage, uh, because that spread has been basically been narrowing here, uh, the share of activity for arms has basically decreased to 6.5% of total applications. And by the way, this number right here is down from about 12%, which was the year-to-date high. So comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value out of today's video whatsoever, then please hit the like button and greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.